I've always found this particular notion funny and, and not at the same time being called a plastic fan, not a real fan. You know, I'm not going to listen to someone who's talking from across the world, never been to X Stadium before or watch this team play and everything else like that, right? It's always been something that you normally see in online comments where you say something and obviously you can tell I'm my accent is not English or anything like that. It is Australian. I live in Sydney, Australia. I support Liverpool FC. I'm of Eastern European background and I have a love of football. I have a love for Liverpool FC. I have a love for the Premier League. I have a love for Serie A. I have a love for La Liga and other leagues like that. I just love football, but obviously Liverpool in the Premier League is my main focus. That's what I look at the most. So when people say in the comments, ah, oh, plastic fan talking about Liverpool FC, or oh, I've never even been to Anfield before, anything like that. Actually, I have. I have been to Anfield, albeit it was close for renovation, but I've been to Anfield. I saw the Shankly Gates, took a photo with the Shankly statue. I've also been to the Emirates as well, took a photo in front of the Iceman, Dennis Burkamp, one of my favorite players as a kid when I was going from my yeah, single digit life to my teenage years. Dennis Burkamp was the man, that goal in the 98 World Cup playing for the Netherlands against uh, it was Argentina that he played. I can't remember now. Just like took the ball, touch, bang, one touch, outside foot, bang, right. It was like, pff, what a finish. The man was cold. That's why they called him the Iceman. Don't worry about your Cole Palmer's. Dennis Burkamp was the original cold man in world football so to say i've never been to these stadiums is a lie i went to the emirates and i watched arsenal take on liverpool in klopp's first full season 4-3 big finish to the match Mane solo goal and then chamberlain getting a late free kick in i went to stanford bridge the night after i watched chelsea play west ham diego costa scoring a goal i think they won the game 2-1 as it were did a tour of the emirates did a tour of uh, stanford bridge did a tour of wembley as well so this is how a lot of these stadiums make their money. It's a lot of how do the clubs make their money. If you think about it, the world, uh, sorry, football is internationally now around the world with all the marketing, everything else like that, because of the popularity in other countries. We wake up early in the morning to watch our teams play. We venture out, traveling 30 minutes to an hour just to go to the local supporters club or bar or pub or get together with mates or whatever it is spending big dollars on multiple streaming platforms if i want to watch the premier league it's on optus sports pay 20 bucks a month whatever it is if i want to watch champions league it's on stan plus an extra amount on top which is what 30 bucks there as well whatever it is so champions league europa league i want to watch the carabao cup i have to go be in sports there's a lot of money that gets involved in these things just so we can watch our team play. And it goes for many people around the world as well. But to be called a plastic fan or not a real fan because I live outside the country has always been a bullshit argument to me and it, and is fucking irrelevant uh, as it as it is. Now, big ups to Saad who uh, had this tweet here which should happen to catch coming back from my, my gig this evening. And he's quoting a tweet from Beanie Man Sports with Ange Postacogli, we'll get to in a second, but it says, The journalism in this country stinks. People coming from across the world are not plastic, they are passionate fans. As I stated previously on numerous videos, these fans spend thousands to come see their team once and wake up at early hours and sacrifice sleep to watch their team play. The arrogance in this country from the football journalist really disgusts me. Now, I'm going to watch this video here where Ange has the perfect answer, and look, I, I did make a video about Ange in the in the early months where the media was glazing over him and just everything he did was just, oh my God, this is Ange, big Ange, fantastic, more please. But in this instance here, that wasn't really directly at him, it was just how the media portrayed him. But this here, I got to give him props. I have to give him props. He's 100% spot on as a fellow Aussie as well. I believe he's a Liverpool fan. Just his answer is just perfect. Simplest thing for a club is to get in tourists who are willing to pay money. See that that's real that's real that's really harsh, yeah? Because I'll tell you why, because I'm probably plastic and touristy because I was coming from the other side of the world, really passionate about football. And if I could get access to see a Premier League game, that was the world to me. So to 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 label people plastic or tourists, I don't think that's fair. Just because people live on the other side of the world. This football club has supporters all over the world, have supporters all over the UK that don't always get access to the games and, and I think we should always have the ability to accommodate them and give them that feeling of, you know, it doesn't make them any less passionate. I think it's really disrespectful to to call fans who are willing to go to the expense of coming halfway around the world 
you don't know how much they how passionate they are about their football club. That doesn't diminish who they are, I don't think. It is bang on, 100% bang on in that response there. I, I can't even argue what he said there is perfect. I spent thousands of dollars to travel to England for a week. I spent two nights in Liverpool and I spent five nights in London. So two nights in Liverpool, I was there, did the tour of Liverpool, went to Anfield, did the museum tour, the uh, memorabilia tour and all that because it was close for, for Renault's. I think they were doing the turf again or something like that. Then I went to London, did my sightseeing, did all that sort of shit. And then, like I said, went to the Emirates, went to Stamford Bridge, went to Wembley, watched two games there. Fantastic. I can't wait to go back and do it again. And I spent big money doing that as well. Back in 2016, it was, the for me, even though I might say I oh, had just visited football stadiums, but that's that to me meant something. Like, I... I can't I can't explain to you the feeling I got when I, I got off that bus and I stood in front of Anfield and I just saw the Shankly Gates. Like I was getting goosebumps thinking about it now. Like it was just like, wow, I, I, I I'm I'm actually here. I'm literally here standing in front of the Anfield gate uh, the, the Shankly Gates at Anfield. I couldn't believe it. Going to the Emirates, seeing the massive Emirates Stadium, going doing the hospitality tour and all that sort of stuff, seeing the statues, the gold Premier League, that stuff was mad, seeing the time capsule they have in there as well, going to Stanford Bridge, doing the tour there, watching a game at Stanford Bridge, watching the game at the Emirates. I couldn't believe I was there. I had the time of my life. It was fantastic. Fans from all over the world, all they want to do is go over and watch their team play. They want to watch their team and support them any which way they can, whether that's watching them at 2.30, 4.30, 5, 6, 7 in the morning, if it's going to the local venue, as I said. I was part of the Liverpool Supporters Club of New South Wales many years ago. After COVID hit, I sort of like stopped and just sort of just got over it sort of thing. But I was one of the reps for the Western Sydney branch and I was organizing the Champions League final at one of the largest venues for sports in Western Sydney like one person organized for like a thousand people to rock up there and and, and gather at Club Marconi if you're in Australia you'll know Club Marconi for the Champions League final where Liverpool played Spurs like I was a part of that I, I helped facilitate we'll have specials for people booking in advance we'll have food and all that sort of stuff in between it was a great night we ended up winning of course so I'm not going to sell off obviously it was a great night but doing that sort of stuff, volunteering, not getting paid for it, that stuff meant something to me because I am a passionate fan. I want to do what I can to support my team. So for journalists to say shit like this, like, oh, stadiums have to facilitate for, you know, the plastic fans and all that sort of shit. This is why people look down upon these journalists and say, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about because of shit like this. And thank you to Ange for speaking up and saying what everyone's thinking. Just because they come from another country, around the world, across the world, a different continent, wherever they're from, doesn't make them any less passionate. And when people speak online and I see them in comments and in tweets and everything else like that, when they have nothing else to say, they all resort back to the same thing. Oh, never even been to X stadium before. You're not a real fan. You don't even live in the country. You don't even live in the city. Why should we listen to you? Just get over a little you know, plastic fan, glory hunter type of thing. It just fucking pisses, pisses me off and pisses many people off. And people that live in England as well, like people like Saad, who can see it himself and say, bro, how the hell are these journalists this arrogant and ignorant when it comes to fans traveling internationally just to watch their team play? It's mind-blowing. So big ups to Ange for sticking up for the little guy, sticking up for the fans who spend big money, take time off work, travel across the world so they can just see their team play, see the stadium and just visit the place that they see on TV week in, week out. Everyone should be able to go and visit the stadium that they want to uh, attend and watch a game there. Everyone should be able to go at least once in a lifetime. That that once in a lifetime opportunity stays with you forever. I still think about the 4-3 game at the Emirates. It was nail biting. Coutinho free kick, bang, fantastic. Mane getting that that solo go cut cutting in and then whipping it in. Bro, my phone battery died that day. I was so buzzed. I'm taking videos and all this sort of shit. My phone battery died. I don't think I have the phone anymore as well. I only got a few photos. It was madness. Best day of my life uh, up to that point. It's fantastic. More people need to experience things like that with their own with their own uh, teams as well, wherever they may watch them. So yeah, big ups to Ange and more fans from across the world. 
international fans everywhere. That's why marketing is a big thing for these for these clubs. That's why they have millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars spent on merchandise, jerseys, and everything else in between. Football is an international sport. You have international fans. Deal with it. End the stream, Dave. End the stream. End it, blah. End it now.